Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today I'm going to show you guys three features that you probably don't know exist in the WeCreate Make It software, and probably 95% of the owners either don't know it exists or they don't use it on a daily basis, and if you do know of one of these, you may not know of the two others here. So we're going to talk about three different features and what they're all for and what they do, and we're going to do a complete walkthrough here. So with that said, we're going to start with our logo here. We're gonna use a colored logo with like a wood grain background here. Just to show you, it does work with colored pictures as well, but I would highly recommend using black and white images when you do this. But what we wanna do is we wanna change a rasterized image, like a JPEG or a PNG, this is a PNG in this example, into a vector image. You can do this in Illustrator or a different outside program, which is what most people do. But a lot of people don't even know this option exists within the Make It app for like a quick trace here. And that's the sketch button right up here. This will only show up if you have a JPEG or a PNG rasterized image selected. It won't show up with a vector image. So what we're doing is we're changing this PNG into a vector image just by clicking sketch. And then you can change these if you need to. I'm gonna just click confirm. And now what it does is it looks like it just created an outline around this. And essentially what it did is it did make an outline, but it turned it into a vector path for those black areas, removing that colored background. But like I said, in black and white photos, it's gonna be the best. But now that this is a vector, this is how you can get score lines or fill engraves or even cutting out the entire image, where with a rasterized image, you can only engrave and then you'd have to put a vector line around the outside to cut it out still. So now that we have a vector, we can just make this a nice sharp engraving that can scale up or down infinitely and retain its quality. Where this one, the bigger you go, the more it will lose its quality in engraving here. So with that said, we're going to delete the first one now that we have a nice clean vector image here. And uh, we're gonna show you the second feature here. So I'm gonna move this all the way up in the corner. And the second feature seems silly, but it is very important. It's the center button here. So if you click center, it does exactly what you think it's gonna do. It puts that dead center of your software, which will put that dead center of your machine, which most importantly will put it dead center of your camera that's going to put a preview on your software here. I don't have my machine hooked up right now, but all you'd do is click refresh, and then that would show you your camera view of your software. By now, I would assume you would use that on a daily basis. So uh, with that said, this is gonna give you the clearest image possible on your software that will match up the engraving in the machine itself. The reason why is your camera is a fish eye camera lens. So the further out you get, the further out you get this way, that camera is gonna distort what it's showing here on the screen and where it actually lands on your material. So you wanna hit center and put your engravings in the center as much as possible, if possible. But if you have a big sheet of material, obviously you don't wanna engrave in the center of that material. You can then go up top. Just know that there may be some distortion and may not land exactly where you place it in the software with the hardware of your machine. The center button comes in handy for like coasters. So if we're gonna make a circular coaster like this, we hit center, it'll be dead center every time and it should align very closely with your software and hardware unless your camera is messed up. And in that case, you can calibrate that in the settings. Now with that said, we're gonna talk about settings next of one particular feature. This is gonna be a third item that we're talking about here. I'm gonna just draw like a rectangle and a circle. And right now, um, we have the default setting of precise vector path turned off. This is normally off by default. Um, I'm gonna show you what it does when this is off, and then I'm gonna show you what this does when it's on. And a lot of people don't know about this, and I highly recommend you turn this on. But when it's off, let's say I wanna select this circle. So the circle is selected, but let's say I wanted to uh, quickly select the rectangle behind it. So you think I could click on this line here right behind the circle because I want that, um, that little square behind it or the rectangle behind it, but it's not working because the circle is on top. 
Um, same thing with the square. If I have the square selected and I go to click on that circle, it's gonna work because the circle's on top, but sometimes it won't if the square is on top. So I know that sounds confusing, but this, this circle is technically on top and you can't click the, the square in the background. To change that, just go into settings, turn on precise vector path selection. Now that you have that on, now you can select just the line itself on each one. And this will be handy whenever you have a whole bunch of different paths overlapping each other. So if you had like a snowman with three circle buttons inside of him, you can select any of those circular buttons without having to worry about the outside of the path being over top and then you not being able to click it. And the only way you can click it is by moving it out of the way and then clicking on it. So you're gonna want this precise vector path turned on. In my opinion, um, that should be on by default. But other than that, those are my top three things is the uh, sketch button whenever you have a vector or a rasterized image and you can turn it into a vector. The center button uh, whenever you want to center an item into the center of your machine. And then that uh, precise vector path selection turned on. So make sure you turn that on. If you guys found this helpful, go ahead and like and comment below and we'll catch you guys in the next one.